Hey everyone, my name is Manik Madan and in this video we'll talk with Dr. Kushbu who is a sixth year medical student in Ukraine uh, where she's pursuing her uh, medical degree uh, and like so hey Kushbu how's it going? Hi, hi everyone. First of all thank you Manik so much for bringing me onto your YouTube. I think there's a cult following you right now and uh, it's great to be here. I'm a final year medical student, currently studying in Ukraine, Kharkiv, and I'm delighted to be here. Can you tell me a bit about like why uh, like somebody would want to join a foreign medical college? Like what are the advantages of that? And what are the disadvantages of joining a foreign medical college over an Indian medical college? Okay, so first of all, it's a big, big debatable topic, I would say. Uh, Firstly, people who join uh, foreign medical colleges are those who are unable to get a seat in uh, uh, NEAT UG, or we can say, what is it, AIPMT, or is it like changed to NEAT? NEAT, so it's NEAT well, UG. It's NEAT UG, right? So at my time, it was AIPMT, but now it's NEAT UG. So generally, people who are unable to, you know, get into counseling or who are unable to get into a good government college, they prefer foreign medical colleges because of, because it's cheap, first of all. And it's the, it's like, I believe it's the most important thing that it is cheaper than the private medical colleges in India. And second, that they do not want to take a drop because either they have already taken a drop and have succumb to the whole pressure of giving neat UG and whole uh, competitiveness of the exam. And the third, that they just want to fast track their years uh, into becoming a doctor. So I think that's like a huge advantage of uh, going into foreign medical colleges. Uh, dis disadvantages are few. First of all, that, first of all, it is that one. It is the stigma of the society that if you are going abroad, if it is not US or UK, then it's a shame. No, no. But second, that the clinics are a little less compared to India is what I have uh, in the all of my six year journey. Uh, I have felt that we lack in the clinics, and yeah, that's it. I think. And third, it depends on the. A country where you are studying in so here in ukraine we have like a five and a half six year course of mbbs whereas in india it is i think four and a half five and a half year including the internship so these are some basic differences that uh, we find that's it can we talk a bit about like how you can fast track into plab and uh, like you can go into usmle without uh, doing next like in the future like can you talk a bit about that Right. So you are getting a degree here in for whatever college you are studying in. Uh, be sure that it is a WHO certified college and what ECFMG certified? certified college. ECFMG, that is, uh, I, I, I believe I'm taking WHO. the right yeah. name. Yeah. 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 ECFMG. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It should be a lot of, uh, a lot of, colleges are not certified so you have to be careful by choosing them and then so you of course you will be getting a degree here you don't need to sit for uh, the MCI FMG exam or the next exam to go into the lab because you will be doing your internship here and you will be getting the certificate and you can directly apply for lab or you know another route that is FY1 which I have covered in my YouTube channel definitely we'll Dr. put the Shadanshu. link down yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a whole another procedure. So UK is very approachable uh, because I am living in the European region. So uh, having the contacts to be able to, you know, talk to people around here and uh, those who are already uh, doing their uh, uh, degree in UK, it's very easier to connect and uh, to be able to understand the procedure, the pathway, and you can just directly jump from Ukraine to UK. And for USMD, uh, USMD, I'll say that it is a little easier to do it here because the pattern of studying is a little different here because it is a six year period. Um, the stress of the education is quite less. And while you are preparing for USMD, I think you can easily clear your um, MBBS uh, 
degree that's what i believe so um so that's it i mean you can easily prepare for usme steps here and give it like i think you are a better person to tell some an img that how the path should be so watch you don't need to USMLE come back to yeah. yeah watch Definitely. my usme playlist yeah you don't need to yeah. really give next and you can just fast track yeah. into uh, or fmg you can just fast track into plab uh you don't yeah. you can do fy your first internship here in like right. called the fy1 uh in the uk and for usmle there's a pathway 6 that can you can use to fast track into usmle without internship right. so that's a big plus uh another thing yeah. i wanted to get into is like before we get into the next part of the video we are not associated mm-hmm. with any agency we are not going to sell you yeah. on something so it's just like a chart that we are having regarding how like foreign medical colleges are and you can make it like you know whatever college you want to go to do it by your own choice we are not going to recommend anything like or any agency so exactly we are not recommending any country we are not recommending any agency you are the final person who has to decide which country is good for you which country is bad for you uh, i mean which country is not suitable for you not bad for you but not suitable for you yeah so so can you talk a bit about like your story and what was the fees of your college and why did you decide yeah. on ukraine why did i decide on ukraine so i have to go like 6 years back um i cleared my so these were the three basic things that was the reason that i came to ukraine first was that i got good marks but reservation <coughs> private college fees <clears throat> yep yeah so uh, i don't think that uh, giving in so much uh, money for an mbbs degree if i say so would be an appropriate choice because i have to do my masters also i mean pg and then i i really want to do super specialization so a lot of things take money and i must be uh, informed enough to understand the economics of my my family and everything so one of the decision uh, big decision was uh, money factor second uh, i could not get a uh, uh, a good marks i mean the appropriate marks like 550 560 at my time that was the marks that you were getting into government college for and i really wanted to go into government college rather than private just because not of, not because of the education but because of the money factor that's it so i really wanted to go into a government college which i could not get into and so i decided that uh, i'll try again so i took a drop year i tried but because of some personal circumstances i could not you know study properly so that's one thing if you are taking a drop year and you are not determined enough your family dynamics are not good or you are having a breakup i don't think that's a good thing to be going through when you are taking a drop year so everything needs to be calm and comp- composed sorry so these three were my reasons and i decided man my family supported me so i came here to ukraine and i think it has been a very good decision i am really happy to be getting a, getting closer to my you know my dream <laughs> that that's awesome so like what made you decide over ukraine like why ukraine over philippines china like what made you decide on that and what was the fees of your college and right. any other so expenses there... yeah all right so there are uh... two things uh, by which you can go into uh, foreign medical colleges two ways there first is the agency route that usually everyone takes i mean almost 80 to 85% students take the uh, uh, agency route and there are some students who directly approach the university they they have contacts with the senior so they give them they give them the you know email id to approach Uh, uh a specific university and then get into the whole uh, process so the first thing is that uh, if you are going into the 10 15 percent wala route like uh, going directly by yourself doing all the work the visa process knowing about the university admission process and everything then you first thing is you have to approach the university and with their corporate email and then everything will be clear uh, by going for the steps ahead second is the agency route which is easier i am not recommending any agencies i am not saying that uh, you should go and you know um, 
go with the agency route but that was easier for me because i had no clue m- nobody from my family has ever gone to abroad even for a holiday so we did not know nothing about it so we decided to approach a, a, a approach an agency which was near to our home we trusted that person so the second thing when it comes to agencies is that the agencies also have commission from the university which they'll be going to so so they'll of course tell you all the goods and the bads of certain universities because they have the pacts of that only but of course everything will be sugar coated and you are the person that you have to understand what will be good for you and what will not be good for you and uh, by, how you can do that is by just uh, talking to a senior over there who's studying doing your own research in the end your research is the one that matters i decided on ukraine because uh it is a government college which uh, i mean the agency uh, told me that it's a government college it has got indian mess which was a huge point for me because i am a vegetarian and going to china and philippines was a bit uh, on the side back because of my whole ve- vegetarian issue another thing was i was inclined towards philippines but i applied late so the philippines seat got booked i mean everything was like done the admission process so i was left with a few other countries like kazakhstan and all of that and for some reason i felt that you and also russia but russia was also on the expensive side so i thought the comparing to russia that i should go to ukraine because i am going to abroad just to save money so why not i choose a cheaper country when it comes to yeah so that was my whole reason and i did not even select capital i mean that is kiev in ukraine because of the same reason the economics it is a little expensive over there uh, but then you get the benefits of the capital so i decided to go for kharkiv that is like a more city region it is like the most peaceful city and i love it it's got indian food bro i mean that's that's that's, that's, that's it that's it i'm sold yeah. yeah indian food all right okay and the other thing i wanted to ask you is like what's your fees uh, what was your fees like now it would have changed i know like what was your fees yeah. at that time yeah so i mean in the whole conversation we have we talk about economics and i don't mention fees <laughs> yeah so fees is good i mean it is around 20 lakhs for the whole 6 years oh my that's I don't know like that's very reasonable have... that's incredibly that's like very... my fees yeah my, i'm from a private college yep <laughs> for one year <laughs> no like 24 like uh, i paid 24 not 20 I think I paid 15 or something for like the entire time because like yeah. mine was like 3.5 lakhs per year so it wasn't that yeah. much like at that time like private medical college fees is like were very low in South, in- South yeah. India so I got saved okay. but now it's okay. like Sorry. so expensive yep. yeah at my time I think I saw the fees and they were like for one year 12 lakhs I don't know I mean I don't know maybe I've seen something wrong but yeah so 20 lakhs was the the fees at that time and that was a good offer and we took it now do you have any idea like what's the fees now yeah so i think that uh, with every year of course everything changes and it's the fees are increasing so i i am not sure how much the fees have increased but it is going to be up more than 20 but there then there are a lot of agencies who have attractive deals if i may say and then you have to decide like <laughs> where you have to go and what you should do yeah that's great the uh, other thing i wanted to ask you was like can you talk about like your medical school experience from uh, ms1 to ms6 like how was that like you know from the first year like what happened second yeah. year what happened and like both in preclinical and clinical yeah. areas yeah i this uh, conversation is going to be like nostalgic uh, first year was i mean i was new to the place the food was new the weather was new the people were new the language was new so luckily i had a senior who i bumped into uh, in my hostel and she was from delhi and we bonded easily over uh, some abuses <laughs> 
<laughs> if i may say uh, yeah. yeah so that and chole bhature and momos and and stuff and delhi stuff so we bonded and she was really kind she was very helpful and she took like she told me the hooks and crooks of the place and you know the nicks and nags and yeah and that's how uh, i survived my first few days over there and uh, i understood the i mean the route from my hostel to the college it was all new like going to a new country i mean i'm sure you must be a little aware i mean <laughs> you can right and yeah, it, it, it's feeling. good it's good and bad cuz like going to a new place yeah. like cuz i'm from north india i went to south india for medical school and now like i'll be going to the yeah. us for residency so it's both a good thing cuz like you're in a uncomfortable zone and that will make you grow but it's a bad thing cuz since like you know you can be susceptible to a lot of bad things like drugs which can be problematic yeah. right so it's both okay. good and bad according to me but for me it ended up being more good cuz i ended up growing out of it like not going into the bad yeah. things at the same exactly, time exactly exactly so of course yeah i even i am a tea toddler and uh, i don't drink i don't smoke anything so that's a good thing for me uh, and i think my parents are quite proud of that <laughs> which is good so yeah i did not go into all of these because that was not my circle anyhow in uh, ukraine itself so it actually also depends on the circle that you are in and i had decided that with so i was a really good student in my school uh, i'm quite confident about that and then i could not get into the government colleges uh, in mbbs and then i had to take a break so all of these things they took a uh, quite a big toll on me and uh, i had decided then that's it i have to be better and this whole process is still you know i am still learning to you know overcome the failure part but uh, i had decided that that's it i'm going to study very seriously because i mean i studied also in that time also but then of course the other circumstances were there but uh, yeah so i decided to study be sincere and uh, yeah uh, that's it so in first year uh, it is generally so you are basically getting a, uh, extra uh, subjects like ukrainian language russian language all of these are inc- incorporated in your schedule because you need to understand these language to be able to communicate with the patient in the future so these subjects are you know uh, put in your uh, schedule and the important uh, subject that is in our first year is anatomy and physiology then so the class patterns are quite different in ukraine uh, than in india in ukraine you have two type of classes one is the lecture where you have a big lecture hall a lot of students from different groups come and sit and go through the lecture and it depends actually people are sleeping writing notes whatever i mean it's a lecture so totally depends how you are perceiving it and then there are classes the regular classes which are more of like a, a question based you know you will be giving tests in the class so we had four classes every day and we had four tests every day like sev- uh, five days a week oh my and, god uh, oh my god how yeah, do you guys yeah. like go through that torture but 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 the exams are quite easy i must say like if you if you have studied a little bit even superficially you will be able to clear the exams the teachers they don't want to fail you at all they just want you to be prepared that every day you are going to be having exam you are going to give exams in terms of you know patient approach or in terms of just just theory approach so i think that uh, it's good like it kind of prepares us for the future and you are not really scared of the mcq exams anymore because like every day four tests i mean four mcqs so that's the thing you have to be prepared for the class and even if you are not that much prepared you they'll pass you so it's kind of a chill thing but then still i mean if depends what kind of a student you are if you are taking it seriously then you'll get good scores like so we have a scoring system 3 4 5 5 being the maximum and if you're a good student you will get 5 if you just want to pass the test then you will get 3 and you will get 
so that's whole another system so there is lecture and then there is class so class is more like test part and lecture is more like stud reading i mean teaching part that's the whole thing the clinics are like almost nil when it comes to first second third year even uh you have few classes here and there of clinics but i mean it's very basic like um report taking i mean history taking and uh, just interacting with the patients teacher because we don't know at that time that much ukrainian russian to be able to you know have a proper conversation in the in the language and so the teacher is there to guide you but then that's it like very very nil in after fourth year the clinics part uh, starts like if it was 5% in the first second third year then it will be like 20% in the fourth fifth year and um, in the second year of course you will have biochemistry uh, pathology uh, pharma all of these uh, pre clinical subjects will be till third year and after third year you will have all the clinical subjects to third to sixth year you will have all the clinical subjects so that is how the ukrainian medical system is first three years is uh, pre clinical after three years right so how is it divided in pre clinical years clinical like so in pre clinical years like in india we have first and yeah. second so how are subjects divided across like these first three years and then like in india again we have two clinical years how are those subjects into clinical years like you know uh, yeah. divided across three years in the ukrainian system like can you talk a bit about that in- yeah so in the first uh, first year you'll have you'll have anatomy as the main subject and like i said previously you'll have some russian ukrainian and other subjects as well uh, medical biology physio- physics also is there i don't know why uh, but physics is also there in the first year and then in the second third year you'll have uh, pre clinical subjects like physio- uh, physiology was in the first year but you'll have biochemistry you'll have uh, pharma you will have pathology with subject i am missing microbio so these will be divided into second and third year got it yeah so so that's it yeah so that's so it so what about like clinical years subject. what about clinical years like so how are yeah clinic so clinical years here the system is a little different uh, the medicine it starts itself from three, third year and then it goes till sixth year yeah so uh, like it's spread into three years and you will be having some part here some part there like so like, like i thought GIT. third year was pre clinical like till third year till third year so i meant fourth fifth sixth okay fourth fifth years. sixth a uh, clinical fourth, fifth, sixth, medicine starts with fourth clinical. year yeah medicine starts from fourth year surgery starts from fifth year and uh, what also just the para clinical subjects Peace. are divided in yeah fourth and fifth year pediatrics is a, a very important subject here and they uh, like they put it across the whole three years four five six and uh, if i'm missing any subject then uh, that will be in the fourth year the paraclinical subjects like ent and ophthalm uh, but obs gyne they that starts from fifth to sixth year so two years so so all of these subjects are divided mostly mostly all the subjects are uh, spread across fourth fifth sixth year so it's gotcha. like a three year period but in the sixth year in our final year what we have is uh, cycles if we are going through nephrology uh, cycle then for four days we'll, we are going to have will be having nephrology if it is a surgery cycle then we'll be having continuously the the surgery cycle for one month or two months however uh, the college has prepared for us so it's i'm basically talking about my university i'm not aware if in um, other ukrainian university is the same pattern or not but in our final year they focus more on the hospital classes we must be in the hospital and everything has to be clinical but even it had had to be the same in the fourth and fifth year itself but of course we had corona and everything went online so our hands on experience on any clinic is quite less being in the covid generation era so gen z let's see <laughs> let's gen see z. how it was i hope i was able to explain everything it was so huge i mean this so guys if you have any doubts 
uh, you know, like just uh, mention it in the comments and Kushbu will get back to you. You can also go to the channel and comment on one of their videos. They also have their Instagram, which are mentioned. So if you have any questions, just get, get to them and they will answer it for you. All right. Okay. Follow, subscribe, like, comment, whatever. Share, yeah. Save. What, yeah. what I want to ask now is like, can you comment about learning languages? Like how uh, hard is it to learn you, like the Ukrainian language yeah. or the Russian language and how much time does it take you? How do you learn that language? Like it totally depends on what kind of a person you are. If you are a fast learner, you will be able to learn the language. And if you are interacting with a lot of uh, locals, you learn the language quite quickly. Um, the locals for me were the supermarket ladies in the cash center <laughs> yeah so they were the locals for me at that time and uh, yeah and the teachers are very good if you take it seriously but I did not take my Ukrainian classes quite uh, seriously so I suck at that but I'm quite okay like I can go through my way like I can go to a shop and buy stuff <laughs> in Russian <laughs> yeah so, so... So, like, are there any resources, though, to learn Russian? Like, you, you have classes on that, right? Yeah. So, that's enough. Yeah. yeah, that's enough. That's enough. That's totally enough. And movies, I think, are a great source. I mean, I learned almost all my English from the movies itself. The books and the movies, that's it. Yeah. What about, like, the food? Uh, so, let's say restaurants. Let's say you want to go out. Yeah. Like, what kind of food do you get there? Is it vegetarian, non-vegetarian? What kind of cuisine is it? So, the uh, cuisine here, I mean, I am very choosy when it comes to food. Uh, I am, like, very loyal to my Indian roots. I love Indian cuisine, and that's what I look for whenever I go out. But, yeah, if you are a non-vegetarian, it's pretty good for you here because everything like includes veget uh, non-vegetarian meat and uh, if you're vegetarian you'll get aloo you'll get potatoes when it comes to food and falafel of course and shurmas are very very famous here i don't know why but like they're very famous here people uh, tell me the... that yeah i have another friend yeah. from ukraine and he's like the first <laughs> he was a vegetarian and he ended up becoming a non-vegetarian because of shawarma. Because like some yeah. like he ordered a falafel, but so, like somehow the waiter mixed his order up. He got a shawarma, and he was like, "This is yeah. the best thing ever." <laughs> I'm non-vegetarian from now on. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so yeah, but like I mean, I'm still vegetarian. So yeah, let's hope it stays that way. And uh, so, do you have any Indian restaurants there or no? Of course, like in the where is like i mean which country there is no indian restaurant i mean i think it's like spread all across I mean, indian food and dude indians are everywhere if you go to brazil down. and uh like i went to brazil and i found indians there i never thought i would find indians in brazil <laughs> there are so many indians in brazil so many indian restaurants in brazil dude if we in are everywhere ukraine, in yeah. ukraine there are so many indians so many indians i'm gonna tell you you won't feel like you you are in another country itself. So. that's great and okay mm -hmm. so the other thing i want to ask you is regarding travel like how expensive is travel like going from delhi to ukraine like how do you manage that how much is the cost right. like yeah and how frequently right. do you come home so I come whenever I get the chance. I mean, that is summer vacations and winter vacations. Uh, the flight ticket, um, it is like before it was around 30,000. But now because of the whole COVID thing, it has gone up to 45,000. Like one way. that is return. One, no, no. One, two and fro. That's, that's really, like, that's okay, dude. Like, that's not that expensive. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. But before in our first, second year, there were no, like direct flights but now you have like direct flight from Kiev to Delhi and which is very good I mean we're very good so yeah but it takes like full 24 hours from the bus or the train if you are in the um, city itself and then going to the capital and uh, flying from there so that will take like full 24 hours but I think it's a normal nominal uh, price it depends like um how your economic background is you don't need to um fly so much but yeah uh winters here are 
quite quite chilly and that is one of the reason i would like you know would run to india because it's i mean that's where it is <laughs> like right now today it's minus 21 yeah that's the biggest complaint i get about going into ukraine cool. is it, it's so cold that you can't go outside like it's just so I, cold chilly i mean i just can't function really like my studies if it is like 100% then in winter is going to go 70% 60% i don't know some days i'm just going to sleep and watch netflix and under the blanket that's it it's nice. so cold I mean, no okay that was one of the big this big uh, pointers when i was choosing ukraine like I can't like do even Delhi winters. I can't handle that. But then coming to Ukraine, like that was one of the big things that I had to, you know, compromise on. I did not compromise on food, but I had to compromise on the weather because you cannot get the best, bo- bo- best of everything, <laughs> best of both worlds. So. Yeah, and uh, the last thing I want to ask you about is like, okay, how frequently do you? Uh, come back to india and go like how frequently do you travel you know like go back like to I, india like i mean yeah like i mentioned summer and winter vacations and generally people don't travel in winter vacation because it is just a 10 day holiday but i usually do, do because it is more of a, you know a clear mind different environment meeting your family friends yeah so that's why i travel in winters uh, but people do not uh they only travel in summers and that is for two months so uh, you would say two times a year for you for most people it's for one me, times one time yeah right and the last thing i want to ask you is like re- regarding safety which is one of the biggest determinants you know whether you want to go there yeah. or no how how safe is uh ukraine right so when i was choosing my college i did not think about the safety part uh when it came to european countries i thought that it was quite safe here i have read articles of course i had done my research and i knew that ukraine was quite safe when it comes like even right now it's 12 o'clock and i can go to a supermarket nearby and i can just buy food and come back so that's uh, one of the things uh, i feel quite uh, okay with but but the pickpocketing i mean the the robbers they are like that that's too much for me i mean in my first day itself i have got an you know my dad gifted me an iphone 7 at that time like it was new 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 thing and i had lost it on the first night of my freshers i had to go by metro and somebody just and i did not feel a thing and it was a whole another issue so yeah so be aware of the pickpocketers stealers uh, pickpocketers yeah yeah and keep your iphone safe please yeah one thing i forgot to mention about the ukrainian medical school system is that we have two exams here uh, conducted by the state government that is croc 1 k r o k 1 and croc 2 that is, croc 1 is in our third year croc 2 is in our last year that is soon going to be in may uh, for us and in croc 1 we have all the pre clinical subjects and they come in an mcq format and you must be able to pass it uh, there is some passing criteria i don't know how much 60% or 70% i don't remember and in uh, croc 2 uh, all the clinical subjects will come so that is one thing that you need to think about when you are going to um, ukraine as a college you you have to pass that exam otherwise you have to repeat the year okay got it and uh, what language are they in like are they in english? english of course of course of course like english. so so your entire curriculum is in english yes yeah yeah okay that that's great dude like okay and uh anyways mm-hmm. uh thank you for coming in i'll uh you know guys like and subscribe uh go check them out at doctor behind the scenes they have an awesome channel where to- they talk about their life Uh, in a foreign medical school it's amazing yeah. uh, so please do check them out okay and thank you for watching uh, see you next time